Lesson 38, True Riches Are Found in Jesus. In today's lesson, we will learn about finding the true riches that are found in Jesus alone. We will learn how marriage and children are much more precious to God than to men. We will meet a man who had plenty of the world's riches, but was still poor, and when offered heaven's riches, he turns them down. Jesus promises great riches to those who follow him, riches that are much different from the world's riches and that are especially rewarded to the humble and needy. The Pharisees came to Jesus and asked him about whether a man could lawfully divorce his wife. And Jesus asked them about what the scriptures had to say. This is where they could have found the answer if that is what they were sincerely seeking. When they told Jesus divorce was permitted by the scriptures, Jesus had to correct their understanding and explains that divorce was never God's intention and that marriage should be honored at all possible costs. Jesus further tells his disciples that those who divorce without just cause and marry another become an adulterer. Jesus upholds marriage as a sacred covenant between a man and a woman and no one should undermine marriage in any way or they will be guilty before God. Also, when little children are brought to Jesus for blessing and the disciples try to chase them away, Jesus is very upset with his disciples and is happy to take the children in his arms to bless them. Again, we see how the view of Jesus is in sharp contrast with men. God cares much about marriage and children, much more than we do, and we ought to love and honor that which God holds dear if we want to find favor with God. A man with lots of this world's riches comes to Jesus asking how he can attain eternal life. Perhaps he thought he could purchase it with all his money. Jesus asked him about keeping the Ten Commandments and the young man reported he had done his best to keep these commandments. Jesus then said to him that he was still lacking something and so he needed to sell all his possessions, give them to the poor and then come and follow Jesus. This was not what the man wanted to hear. He loved his wealth and found his happiness and security in his money. It was too much for him to give up, and so he went away sad. Jesus then told his disciples, It is very difficult, almost impossible, for a man with riches to enter the kingdom of God. Men cling to money and will not let it go for anything, not even the gospel. Jesus teaches here that true riches are found in knowing and following him, not in the passing pleasures of this world. Jesus has the only way to eternal life, but some are not willing to forsake their love of money to follow Christ and are therefore lost. As Jesus explains how difficult it is for men to be saved, the disciples are astonished and asked who then can be saved. Jesus says that with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. This means that man cannot do anything to earn salvation. It must be entirely the work of God, and we can have this salvation when we simply reach out in faith to receive it. Peter, perhaps, was a bit concerned about their own salvation, and so he reminds Jesus of all that they had left to follow him. Jesus quickly points out to his disciples that those who have left their friends family, jobs, and comforts, to follow him would have much reward in this life and also eternal life in the age to come. There is no one who truly follows Jesus in faith that will in the end be disappointed, for their reward is eternal and in heaven. Jesus again speaks to his disciples about his coming trial and execution in Jerusalem. It is remarkable to see how detailed the Lord Jesus is about exactly what is going to take place and how the Jewish authorities would hand him over to the Romans to be scourged, spit upon and crucified. He is trying to prepare his disciples for these events which will prove a great trial to their faith. 
He mentions also his resurrection, for this would be of great help to them later when trying to understand the events surrounding his crucifixion and resurrection. While Jesus speaks of his being put to death, John and James are looking for positions of honor in his kingdom and ask Jesus about this. Jesus asked them if they were ready to share in his same sufferings and death, and they said they were ready to do so. Jesus said that indeed they would suffer and die also because of their obedience to God, but that positions of honor would be given to those who were most worthy. The other ten disciples were rather annoyed at James and John trying to push ahead of them into positions of great honor. When Jesus sees the envy and lack of love among his disciples, he addresses this and teaches them that greatness in his kingdom is measured by humility and a willingness to serve others. True riches are not to be found in pushing ahead of others, but are found in humble service to others. God values people and sent his Son to redeem all people. And when we share the same heart of love to others, we will not look to exalt ourselves, but to serve. While going along the road near Jericho, a blind man named Bartimaeus called out to Jesus to have mercy upon him. At first the crowds tried to silence his shouts, but he persisted because of his desperate need. When Jesus called the man, he came and begged him to have his sight restored, and Jesus was glad to give him his sight. Having our eyesight is certainly one of the richest gifts God can give to us, but Jesus can offer even greater riches than physical sight, and that is spiritual sight, when we learn the truth of God's salvation through Jesus Christ. If you have this, you have the greatest riches of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark chapter 10 verse 45.